Laura, Mr. Brian. This video is for my yellow and orange belts. This is our block three guard cycle, okay? Um, we're gonna get started with our takedown, which this cycle is the double leg takedown. Keep in mind, there are several different ways to do the double leg. This is just one way that we want you to know for this block, okay? So, we're both gonna be in our grappling bases, and what's really important, and I, I wanna see everybody do this, is right here, I am too far away to shoot, okay? He is definitely gonna sprawl on me. So the first thing that I do is I take my penetration step right there. That gets me close enough to touch the knee. If I'm close enough to touch the knee, I'm close enough to finish the takedown, okay? So I go in with my penetration step. This knee in the center is gonna be the one that drops right here. My ear is on his hip. I'm already grabbing around his knees. Now watch, when I take this step, I'm going to go sideways right here, lifting up his leg, chopping in, and driving. Once I get him down, he's going to go ahead and shrimp out and get his closed garden. Okay? So let's do that again, and I'll do it from the opposite side. So this is a sideways takedown. There are last double legs where we go straight back. Everybody just remember, you're going to finish sideways on this. So we can start with a little slap, bump, take that penetration step. I'm dropping that knee right here. My head is looking up, so I'm not um, in danger of getting choked. I take that step, and then I'm pulling this leg up to the sky, driving, chopping. As I finish, he's going to go ahead and start replacing. Right there. Okay, we'll do that one more time. A little bit fuller speed. So slap, bump, take that penetration step. Drive, pin, he shrimps out, and we get the closed guard, okay? So, this cycle being the guard block, we are going to be going over submissions and escapes from those submissions, okay? So, in the closed guard position, we're gonna go over our arm bar. So, first thing, I'm gonna pick the arm I want, I'm gonna pull across my body, okay? And I will say, I show several different versions of this, um, because as, the, as these kids get higher in rank, they can remember more details, okay? So I'm gonna kind of do just like a little less details right now. So I get the arm pulled across. I like to control the posture a little bit more by grabbing up on the shoulder. I'm gonna put my foot in their hip and I need to turn my head to be in alignment with this arm. And when I do that, this leg is up high, my opposite leg is up high and I'm chopping down on his back and right here, it makes it so easy for me to just throw that leg over his head, okay? So I've got both of my legs in position. I'm gonna be squeezing my knees, not crossing my feet. That actually creates space right here. So I'm gonna be pinching my knees and I'm gonna be elongating this arm and pushing him away with the back of my legs as I lengthen out that arm. So pull the arm across. If you can remember this detail of pulling the shoulder down, that's great, if not, you can just put that foot in the hip, rotate, throw the leg over, elongate. One more time. Pull the arm across, get that rotation, throw the leg over, and get your finish. Okay? So let's go ahead and go over one defense to the arm bar. Again, martial arts, tons of ways to do techniques, tons of escapes to those techniques. This is just one way. So, Mr. Brian, he's gonna grab that arm, and I know he wants to straighten this arm, so I'm going to already be bending it, okay? When he goes to throw that leg over, I'm gonna shoot my arm past, pulling my arm out and passing. A lot of the kids know the position of the cradle. All right, we talked about that last cycle. You can finish in the cradle, or you can just finish in side mount. Um, so when he goes for his arm bar, I've also told the kids you can go ahead and grab your own bicep if you want, okay? And right here, we talked about the unicorn horn. You can use this to help catch that leg, pulling our arm out and passing. A little bit more live speed. Right there, okay? Um, second submission this cycle is the triangle choke. So um, we're gonna do a push-pull entry. So I tell my kids, you can always do a triangle when one arm is in and one arm is out. So I've got his wrist, and I'm just gonna be pushing this to his belly and I'm gonna swallow. I'm gonna take my legs up and over his shoulder, okay? So now, once I get here, just like the arm bar, I pull the arm across. Next step, my free hand is gonna reach up behind his head to grab my shin. Once I grab my shin, then I can open my guard to rotate just like the arm bar. 
I'm flexing my foot up here. And now I'm gonna throw this up and over and pinch my knees. So the key to a good triangle is making sure that everything is locked in tight. So it's like puzzle pieces. My foot needs to go right behind my knee for this finish. And I'm flexing my legs, okay? So again, I'm gonna do that push pull. I'm gonna open up and swallow right here. I don't have to have my legs perfect. This is just the starting position. I pull that arm across. I reach up and grab my shin. I hit that rotation, just like the arm bar. I'm gonna cover up that shoulder with my leg and I'm gonna pinch my knees. Triangle choke. Now let's do the defense to the triangle choke, okay? So, when Mr. Brian, he's gonna do that push pull right here. So what I need to think about is already right here, hooking by his knee so that I can have a little bit of space and also taking my elbow to his hip. Once I'm here, I can, I can survive here for a couple seconds, okay? I'm gonna walk my knees forward and I'm gonna sit up, all right? When I sit up, that posture helps alleviate some of this choke on me, okay? Now, I've got a little bit of space from that posture to slide my hand in and push his knee down to the mat, all right? Once I get that knee pushed down, that's when I can complete my windshield wiper pass, which all of my yellow and orange belts should know from our white belt cycles. So he does that push pull. Immediately, I'm gonna start pulling this open so I have a little bit of space right here on this side. I'm gonna be trying to take my elbow over to his hip on this side, gives me a little bit of space here. I can't hang out here for a long time, so I'm gonna walk my knees up and posture up right here, okay? Now, on this side, I can start to move this hand in, and when I do that, and when his guard breaks open, I can push that down, pin the leg, windshield wiper my feet, pass the side mount, okay? So, those are our techniques this cycle. Um, be sure to study up, watch the little details, and good luck to you. All right, guys, now we're gonna go over the defense to the double leg takedown, okay? So if he wants my legs, I've gotta get him away, all right? So we're gonna be here, and my number one advice to all my students is this hand right here. It's gonna save you so much trouble if you can have this hand in front of your leg. It's like he is the fish, all right? This right here is the bait, and here is my hook that I'm gonna catch him in, okay? I know he wants this leg, so when he shoots in, Boom, I already am stopping him by having this strong shoulder here. Now, as he's reaching in for me, that's when I'm gonna sprawl my hips back. Okay, so all my weight is pushing into him. My hips are low, my legs are straight. From here, I'm gonna spin around to his back. Okay, so um, big mistakes that students will do is when they sprawl, they put their hands on his back. Already too late, he's got the takedown, okay? Do not put your hands on this person's back because if you do, he has direct access to the legs and has an easy takedown here. Um, another common mistake is maybe they have this, but when they go back, their legs are bent. If your legs are bent, he still can get the takedown, okay? Um, last mistake that I see that I wanna talk about is we'll start off real good. So he'll shoot in, boom, I'll sprawl, and then I'll get lazy and put my knees down, and then he gets the takedown, okay? So the legs have to be straight back. Um, your hips have to be pressing down into him, all right? And when you get that sprawl, you need to get out of there and you need to move position. So he goes in, he takes his shot, boom, right there, sprawling my hips back. If he's driving into me, that's fine. I'm digging my feet into the mat, spin around, okay? And then if you're a higher rank, you guys know you have um, different places to go to from there. But sprawl and spin for my yellow orange belts.